Mm. One Zambia, one nation, it's a pleasure to have you all on our news desk. My name is Alice Banda and our sign language interpreter is Emil Damlea. Let's take a look at the stories making headlines. President Hijilema unveils two new hospitals. Information and media minister appeals to Chinese investors. And Sam Konga takes second in men's Diamond League sprint. The news in detail. President Hagainde Hijilema has commissioned the 25 million United States dollars state of the art Chimwemwe Level 1 hospital in Kitwe district on the Copper Belt province. Mutalekani covered the event and filed in this report. This is the new state-of-the-art Chimwemwe Level 1 Hospital in Kitwe District on the Copper Belt Province. The facility was funded by the British government at a cost of 25 million United States dollars. President Haka Hichilema, who commissioned the facility, thanked the British government for support in helping Zambia provide quality health care to its citizens. The network between the British people and the Zambian people is an historic. Amongst the areas we've worked together is the health sector. Delivery of this hospital is a great, great commitment and partnership between the British and the Zambian people. Manja, 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 manja. So thank you, British High Commissioner. Pass our message of appreciation to London, to Buckingham Palace. At the moment, this hospital, Your Excellency, has got 47 permanent staff. This is from orderies up to the doctors. The doctors, there are only seven, but mostly we have 105 volunteers. And as you have already directed, we are looking into their employment, Your Excellency. And acting British High Commissioner to Zambia, Sam Waldock, disclosed that the health facility was constructed with assistance from a UK-based firm. So we're really excited about our partnership in health. It's a broad partnership. It covers malaria, it covers nutrition, it covers health security. But today we're unveiling this brand new hospital, which is a state-of-the-art facility built to real international standards that are going to serve this community here. It's one of five large hospitals that we've built along with 115 health centers all over Zambia uh, and we did this through a UK company called NMS uh, uh, with UK export finance which is a guarantee we go to the Zambian government and that phase of the contract is now finishing and we're just we've just signed the second phase of the contract so there'll be another five district hospitals and another 120 health centers all over Zambia uh, which will ensure there's provision for, uh, for sick people all over the country. And the visibly emotional Catherine Mutale, who is the first mother to deliver a baby at Chimwama Level 1 Hospital two months ago, thanked government for the health facility. With a catchment area of 300,000 people, Chimwama Level 1 Hospital will help reduce referrals to Kitwe Teaching Hospital. Mtalakani for Zanese News in Kitwe, Copper Belt Province. In a related development, President Hagainde Hijilema has reiterated his directive to employ volunteer health workers in hospitals and clinics. Speaking when he commissioned Chamboli Level 1 Hospital in Kitwe, President Hijilema says if the health workers can sacrifice to work without a salary, that is commitment enough for them to be employed. Tovini Ngombe reports that the head of state has urged the volunteer health workers to remain calm as government will ensure they are all employed. The commissioning of Chamboli Level 1 Hospital in Kitwe Susakiri constituency on the Copper Belt province who help in the decentralization of health services for these people who have been traveling long distances to access health care services. The hospital, which is equipped with the state-of-the-art equipment, will help in catering for people's health needs. 
President Haganda Chirema commissioned the Chamboli Level 1 Hospital, which has been constructed by a grant from the Japanese people. But I want to simply indicate the commitment this government has, this UPND Newton government has, the party itself from the day we were in opposition to our manifesto, we talked about delivering health services, effective health services, closer to the population. If you believe that. D level one is a clear manifestation of our government's decentralization policy with regard to serving our people much better, more effectively. Please, the people of Gambia, you must follow the stories of these governments and leaderships. We have a story to tell. This is part of the story. That's why we work day and night. We don't believe in party after party in the UPND government. We believe in work, work, more work after work. That is how we are going to deliver this country. Japanese ambassador to Zambia is happy that the commissioning of the hospital will continue to strengthen the warm relationship with Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, Japan has provided a grant assistance approximately 32 million US dollars to the construction of the Chamboli Level 1 Hospital as well as Mushidi Level 1 Hospital under construction in Indora District. As a gift from the people of Japan to the people of Zambia, this has been done by constructing the service building, including outpatient department, medical works, laboratory, and the radiology department, among others, and provision of high-tech medical equipment. Minister of Health Elijah Muchima notes that the president's directives to employ volunteer health workers will be implemented. You are a healer in your own way. Your Excellency, when we formed the government, people thought you were a joker. You didn't mean it. Today, here you are. In three years, see what you're doing. You're touching the hearts of the people everywhere. Every province is supposed by design to have about 20 hospitals from the one to three. And what you have done is you have brought in a equalizer. You want to balance the country. You want to bring country as a single unity. Copper Belt Minister Elisha Matambo, Copper Belt Minister Elisha Matambo, assured the Osaki residents that government has continued to deliver on health services. <laughs> The president was on the Copper Belt province for a two-day working visit where he relaunched the Concordia Copper Mine and commissioned Chambori and Chimwemo Level 1 Hospital. Tovin Ningombe, Zanis Kitwe. Minister of Information and Media Cornelius Mwetwa has appealed to Chinese digital technology companies to take advantage of the good business environment Zambia has to invest in the country. Mr. Mwetwa says Zambia and China have continued to enjoy cordial mutual relations which Chinese companies should take advantage of. The minister was speaking in Beijing, China after touring the 2024 Beijing International Radio and Television Exhibition. Details in the following report. It is known as the fastest growing and most dynamic global market for digital technologies. China has become a trendsetter and a global technology powerhouse with its cutting-edge innovations.
Minister of Information and Media, wants this innovation replicated in Zambia. Technological advancements uh, of China and with a good relationship China and Zambia are you know, enjoying, given that a number of uh, Chinese companies are now setting up in Zambia for value addition purposes. I think one of the uh, sectors we must really target is uh, this um, uh, technology you know, sector for skills transfer to our people by way of uh, establishing some of the companies right back home so that it's easy uh, uh, to transfer those skills uh, you know, to, to our people. It is very evi self-evident that uh, uh, to foster development, you need your own people to be equipped with the right skills to advance the agenda for which you stand for. Mr. Mwetua, toward the Beijing International Radio and Television Exhibition to appreciate new technology in radio and television production. This has been a very good exposure for us. It has, uh, you know, exposed us to real you know, modern cutting edge, you know, technology. We have seen a lot of digital, you know, products, uh, digital solutions. As you know that uh, the world is moving into the direction of, uh, you know, uh, e-expenditure in terms of uh, everything else that we have to do, you know, in life is uh, going digital. The minister is in Beijing, China, to attend the China-Africa Media Corporation and the China-Africa Think Tank High-Level Dialogue, which has closed today. Kalungam Sonda, Zanis News, in Beijing, China. In other news, the Saka province permanent secretary Robert Kamalata has warned local contractors not to apply for or accept contracts which they know will not be completed. Mr. Kamalata has regretted that the government is losing a lot of money and time because some local contractors are in the habit of collecting down payments and later disappear. The permanent secretary said this when he inspected Constituency Development Fund CDF projects in Longwa district. Details in the following report. Lusaka province permanent secretary is in Longwa district to inspect Constituency Development Fund CDF project. The Permanent Secretary is not happy with the works at New Kavula Modern Market, which has been stored. He has warned contractors who are abandoning CDF projects, saying government is losing a lot of money. We are appealing to our colleagues, if you are unable to do a project, don't bid for it. Because, number one, we are delaying progress. Now you can imagine, at that point, it was 2.2. Now we have re-advertised for this same project. This time around, it is now 3.8 million. So we have about three stands. There will be over 156 somewhere there. Mm. They need to come with uh, a storage. There will be uh, a storeroom for the guys that will be operating from here, the market master. Mm -hmm. It's also going to have uh, an ablution job. Mr. Kamalata has cautioned the public to be aware of some people giving false information about government projects and programs. Well, it is very important that we leave the comfort of our offices. We go out there to explain the projects and programs government is putting in place to mitigate the disaster and situation in the country. And Chief Impuka has commended government for the various projects and empowerment programs that is being implemented in his chiefdom. When a father and a mother are living with children, they will make sure that the children eat. They will look for food so that they can eat. And this is exactly what the government is doing. Those who are speaking, they are those who are aspiring for something else. They, they, they will tell lies. They will tell the truth. It's like that. Don't bother with them. Liz Tandumba reporting in Luangwa district. Now, people in Sioma and some parts of Shangombo district of Western Province 
are living in fear following the presence of stray elephants from the Siomangwezi National Park. Acting Sioma District Administrative Officer Good Hope Kapoto noted that elephants are terrorizing the locals and causing damages to their crops in the district. Mr. Kapoto has since called on the Department of National Parks and Wildlife, DNPW, to quickly intervene before lives are lost. And DNPW Western Province Principal Warden Fraud Monga said the province has experienced unprecedented human-animal conflict cases because people are invading the animal spaces by fetching for wild fruits. Mr. Monga advised people to desist in crunching the national parks in order to avoid being attacked. Recently, a 70-year-old woman from Shangombo district was killed by a stray elephant from Siomangwezi National Park. The current situation that we have, uh, our people going to the park to extract some roots that they can use as food, and that, real, uh, that brings about the conflict with the animals. So time and again, I think our wildlife personnel from national parks and the community need to do more of the sensitization so that areas where animals are found uh, human beings cannot go and disturb them and that will reduce from the conflict that may exist. So it begins not at national level but at maybe ministerial level, at national park level, they address and engage the community so that people know the zones where they can operate or where they can do their activities and where the animals cannot be disturbed so that at the end of the day we find ourselves coexisting with the, the wildlife. The human wildlife conflict uh, matter. Uh, government needs to put up uh, certain measures, for instance, the compensation of damaged fields, uh, which is not enshrined in any of the uh, policies and guidelines that are developed. And also, see how best maybe they can provide the water in the park so that animals live within their vicinity. Also, appreciating that we need to coexist. So in the process of coexisting, we expect no damage should be done to the park, to the animals or to the wildlife, but also uh, the livelihoods of human beings should not be affected also. So we take the first break. More stories still to come. Zambia Today is a program that keeps you informed on various government policies and programs. Join us every Tuesday at 18 hours on the News TV Topster Platform, Channel 6 DTT and 458 DTH. Don't miss. Welcome back. Director in the Department of Resettlement, Cooper Chibomba, has disclosed that government will subdivide 400 hectares at Kanakantapa Resettlement Scheme. Mr. Chiwomba was speaking when he addressed Kanakantapa Resettlement community leaders and squatters. Details in the following report. They illegally settled at Kanakantapa Resettlement Scheme, and now government intends to formalize their stay here by subdividing the settlement to the 900 squatters to bring order and development to the area. Director at the Department of Resettlement said at a meeting with community leaders that 400 hectares of land will be subdivided to accommodate all the squatters. I found that this number was a very, very high number of people who were not originally supposed to be here, but because of the reasons I've out outlined, they went and settled. So you have one, you have one parent here with seven children sitting around this area occupying eight farms. Now, the reason the Department of Resettlement was established under the office of the Vice President is to target vulnerable Zambians with the purpose of helping them improve their livelihoods through land. The squatters have their own concerns. Confusion idiot. Muba ne suba diabe ne vadia. Wala sanga na wapi mama plots. Let's say let's say show idi hundred by hundred. Dain. Vanina. Wawishi, Avana, Bonsa Febakwa in the Kalazan Shoko Sebaka Kunga, Mamonaka, so I photo added Dandola. Nine for two passing poem, nine for two, like to my two pro. Director Mamonaka can be the Vatia. You must have minimum to pass, I see it's an impossible mathematics. Nice and would be a meeting HT. 
the best this thing we are we agreed in this meeting tinae sa kuesa ma numbers 1 head 50 by 100 yours didn't work out and the the, the size of the table that the goodies are now more villages yours it was standard 50 by 50 so at least you can accommodate now when i want to many variety Kanakantapa Resettlement Scheme Chairperson General expressed disappointment that some people are causing confusion in the resettlement scheme. We do tell them, please gentlemen, you wait, you have readers in your villages. Report if you are not clear. But I'm surprised to see to it that people, they are failing to understand. Just a very simple thing. And I look as if I'm the one inciting, because I also receive some, even calls, to say, ah, Chair, you are inciting, you are inciting. Then I said, you come, let's go round. Tell me, the people that I'm inciting. But surely, we found there is none. This resettlement scheme was established in 1988 with only 96 settlers. Today, the scheme has more than 900 squatters, prompting government to distribute land. Evelyn Masialeti, reporting for Zanis in Chongwe District. In our environment segment, the Zambia Red Cross Society, ZRCS, in partnership with the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF, has held a meeting to validate nature-based solutions for the Kafue Flats for Namwala and Itejitej District. The initiative is aimed at addressing the intertwined challenges of disaster risk management, DRM, and sustainable understanding of the role of nature-based solutions. Here is a report. The Zambia Red Cross Society, in partnership with Worldwide Fund, have been embarked on an 18-month initiative titled making disaster management sustainable, understanding the role of nature-based solutions in the Kafia River Plains. This endeavor seeks to address the intertwined challenges of disaster risk management and sustainable development in Kafia River Plains. Stakeholders in the district converged to validate the findings of nature-based solutions for the Kafia River Plains. Two calamities in one season. You can have floods and droughts at the same time in one season. And so, for this initiative that uh, has been taken by Zambia Red Cross Society to find out how we can use nature to answer the issues of flooding and the drought is uh, very highly commendable. The Zambia Red Cross Society disaster management manager gives an insight of the program. The Zambia Red Cross is working with the WWF as well as the Netherlands Red Cross where we have a unit which is called the 510. So basically we are implementing a project which is called Nature Based Solutions. Uh, uh, for enhancement of uh, resilience. So we want to see how best we can uh, tap into nature-based solutions uh, or we can uh, learn about nature-based solutions that uh, exist within the Kafiwe catchment area. So what are those nature-based solutions that uh, are found in the Kafiwe catchment area and see how best we can come up with a research paper that talks about uh, the key findings uh, or the key nature-based solutions that are within that catchment area. Zambia Red Cross Society has contracted the University of Zambia to facilitate engagements with key stakeholders in Itezitezi, Namal and Monze to prioritize nature-based solutions. Professor Henry Sitingabula is team leader from the University of Zambia. The Red Cross and the other partners they are working with uh, were able to uh, ask us to come and uh, gather more information uh, from communities so that we give them a report they are going to use for sourcing funds in order to help alleviate the suffering of the people in the Kafiwe uh, Flats area. While in the Piri, reporting in Namala district of South... Still on environment news, traditional leaders in Chiawa chiefdom of Kafiwe district 
have urged their subjects to adopt the carbon trading project under the Community Climate Solutions Zambia to mitigate the effects of climate change. Kabwandu's senior village headwoman, Godfrida Kabwandu, said her subjects are ready to adopt the carbon trading practice, which will help preserve nature and reduce tree cutting. Details in the following report by Naomi Piri. Over 2,000 small-scale farmers in Shawa Chiefdom of Kafue District have registered to venture in carbon trading. The farmers will embark on slashing of 6,000 hectares of land, which includes agriculture fields and forests, to reduce bush burning. The village head persons in Chiawa Chiefdom have urged their subjects to adopt the carbon trading project in a bid to mitigate the negative effects of climate change. Community Climate Solutions Zambia Chief Executive Officer James Manza says the small scale farmers of Chiawa area are ready to venture in carbon trading. We are promoting slashing of grass, making fire breaks to avoid the fires because fires contribute to the emissions of carbon and eventually contributing to global warming, which brings about climate change. And all the effects are no rains, drought, diseases, and so many things. In Chiawa here, we are working with the local community, the chief and the government, to support the community forest area through community forest management. In total, it's about 60,000 hectares. And acting Kafue District Commissioner Dr. Perfecto Kabanshi, who officiated during the slashing exercise, reaffirmed the government's commitment to reducing the anthropogenic bushfires. I need not emphasize that the government, under the leadership of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Akainde Ichilema, is committed to reduce to reduction of anthropogenic bushfires and is alive to devastating effects of the, the fires to both mankind and the ecosystem. Reporting, I'm Nampiri. Also in the news, Mulungoshi University has donated blankets and bedsheets to Zambia Correctional Services, ZCS in Central Province. Mulungoshi University Vice Chancellor Royson Mukwena said the university is proud to cooperate with ZCS in ensuring that inmates have a humane living environment. Details in the following report. In correctional environments, conditions can often be challenging, especially during the cold and rainy season. This is the reason why Mulungoshi University has donated basic necessities such as blankets, bedsheets, and curtains in order to promote a humane living environment for inmates under the Zambia Correctional Services in Central Province. Mulungoshi University Vice Chancellor said the donation will enhance the living conditions of inmates. To reaffirm our commitment to the principles of compassion, dignity, and social responsibility, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Deputy Commissioner General of the Zambia Correctional Services and your dedicated team for the invaluable work you do in rehabilitating and reintegrating individuals within our correctional facilities. Your efforts, sir, are vital in ensuring that every person, regardless of their past, has the opportunity for a better future. In receiving the donation, Zambia Correctional Service Deputy Commissioner General Walia Kuyomba thank the university for the gesture to uh, uh, ensure that uh, they receive much as you could uh, uh, you could say it's a small but for us it's not a small thing i think it means a lot it changes the, the welfare of our entire population mr kiumba further appealed to the university authority to consider providing tailor-made courses for correctional service officers. Looking forward to tailor-made programs, especially that uh, we are one-on-one -on -one with the 
discernment. I know as a hub of knowledge, we are confident that you might come up with something that will impart, I think, more knowledge on the officers and courses that are competitive also for the inmates. Daniel Billy for the next news in Kapilimposhi District, Central Province. Lastly, in sports news, Zambia's Olympic bronze medalist Muzala Samkonga finished second in the 400 meters at the Luansen Diamond League held yesterday. Great Britain's, Britain's Matthew Hudson Smith won the race, clocking 43.96 seconds, while Samkonga finished with a time of 44.06 seconds. The performance demonstrated Sam Konga's continued presence among the elite in track and field while previously securing his spot for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. The Diamond League is an annual series of elite track and field competition that began in 2010, replacing the IAAF Golden League. It consists of 15 top tiers, invitational meetings held globally, enhancing the sports appeal beyond Europe. Athletes compete across various disciplines, earning points to qualify for the finals in Zurich or Brussels, where champions are crowned. The series aims to showcase the best in athletics, featuring both men's and women's events equally. As we end the news, a reminder of the top stories that made headlines. President Hijilema unveils two new hospitals. Information and media minister appeals to Chinese investors. And Sam Konga takes second in men's Diamond League sprint. On that note, we end Zanis News. On behalf of the entire Zanis production team, I'm Alice Banda, not forgetting Emil Damlea, our sign language interpreter. Goodbye and God bless you.